Welcome to lesson on 8.1, graphing simple rational functions. So we'll be learning to graph and to analyze uh, f of x equal to 1 over x. Uh, that's actually a type of rational function, which is defined as a function in the form f of x equal to p of x over q of x. p of x is a numerator and q of x is a denominator, and they're both polynomials. And obviously the denominator q of x cannot equal to 0. And the most basic of this rational function is the one that we have over here. Uh, that is f of x equals 1 over x. And we sometimes refer to that as a parent graph or a model function. So given this model function of f of x equals 1 over x, uh, why don't you fill out the table, but do not yet graph using that, those values. OK, uh, so if you filled it in, these are the values that you should have gotten. And don't fill it in yet, but if you did, that's what you get. Have you noticed that it's really hard to tell the difference between uh, 4 and 1 quarter, 8 and 1 eighth, and 10 and 1 tenth? Right, that's exactly. When you connect it, it looks great uh, using computer, but with hands, it's kind of hard. So realistically, what I want you to do is just focus on those things, right? And when you do that, graph looks more like that. So it's something that we could manage, right? A quarter of this tick right here, I think we can handle that. Anything more is pretty hard, so let's stick with these values, okay? Now go ahead and plug it in and graph that. Okay, I'm gonna move on to this. So what is the domain of this? Well, if you look at this, all the domain, x is all real numbers, except x can't be zero, right? So I need you to write that in terms of um, inequality set notation, and interval notation. If you did that, that's what you should get, right? Um, the only thing that I would, may do differently is the set notation. Instead of this, I may just say x is all real number, comma, x not equal to zero, right? I think that might be a little quicker, okay? Now, let's look at the range. It's very similar to the domain. The range is the y value. So y could be anything except y can't be zero here. Let's see that, guys? That's a little void in the middle. Right, so you can fill it in uh, for the range in the same exact way. So y is greater than zero or y is less than zero, but it's not zero. And that's the interval notation from negative infinity to zero or zero to positive infinity. That u sign means union. It means or. So you could use that interchangeably. I just know that they're the same thing. What is the in behavior? Uh, let's take a look. Um, if you x goes to get x as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, the y seems to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Instead of just saying smaller, what is it approaching? Yes, it is approaching y equal to zero, right? Y is approaching zero, but it will never be zero. So then let's do some uh, mind game. So so, uh, sorry, mental game, right? If x is 10 with, a re with this reciprocal function, the y is 1 tenth. But if it was 100, it would be 1 hundredth. If it was a million, it would be 1 millionth. If it was trillion, it would be 1 trillionth. 1 divided by a trillion is essentially nothing, right? So as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, y gets small and small, going down towards 0, right? And that's exactly what we write down. And it looks exactly the same on the left-hand side, except that it is approaching zero from the negative side, right? So as x goes to negative infinity, but y is still becoming zero, okay? There's a couple more things I want you to make note of. Um, right here, that this, this null and void right there, that is called the vertical asymptote. And the equation for that is y-axis, right? Which is x equal to zero. Similarly, for that is called horizontal asymptote, and x-axis, the equation for that is y equal to zero. Okay, please make a note of that. It'll be very, very important going forward. So that right there is the, um, right here guys, is the graph of f of x equal to one over x. Going forward, so I just copy that down over here. So those are the features that are kind of obvious. And I just kept one, one, and negative one, negative one, just give us a sense of 
direction and whatnot. The one on the right hand side, the y column, f of x equal to a times, you know, parentheses one divided by x minus h close parentheses plus k, that is the transformation of this right here. And h is the horizontal shift that we've learned in the past, and k, I'm sorry, the h. So that's the horizontal shift is referred not to as a vertical asymptote. See that right there? Vertical asymptote. I'm sorry, this one. And then y equal to k is the uh, vertical shift, and that will be referred to as the uh, horizontal asymptote. Once we draw the picture, it makes more sense. Okay, but but before we talk about that, let's talk about a. What happens? A is equal to negative one. Do you remember what a did? If a is negative one, if a is negative, it was vertical reflection, right? So that's exactly what we do. What was positive on the right hand side because negative, and then look at here, guys. It's positive now. But it used to be negative, right? So we did a vertical uh, reflection there. Okay, just the rules don't change. Uh, it's the same thing, no matter what kind of function we have. What if a is three? It's a when it's bigger than one, when it's anything other than one, it's a vertical stretch or vertical compression, right? So we multiply all the y values by three. So my y value is one. So in the new one, you multiply that by three, so it should become three. And this one over here, negative one, should become negative three. Right. And you do that to every single little point, right? Um, this becomes a lot easier if you use more than one point to give us a sense of how it changes. Last but not the least, let's talk about the transformation of h equal to 2 and k equal to 2. When you do that, in terms of shift, right, this origin right here becomes, moves to the right by 2, 1, 2, it goes up to right there. So that is the intersection of the two blue lines. That's two blue lines represent vertical and the horizontal asymptote. And from here, we draw 1, 1. There you go. And from here, we go negative 1, negative 1. And then we could draw this shape right here. All right? All right. So now that we did three different kinds of transformation, uh, let's talk about more interesting shapes. How about this? g of x equal to 3 times, uh, parenthesis 1 over x minus 1, close parenthesis plus 2. Uh, so h is 1 k is 2, and a is 3. So hk is 1 and 2, and a is 3. Because it's positive, uh, the basic shape doesn't change. I think vertical stretch is there, but the general shape doesn't change, right? So in order to get these values, the y values, I got to multiply the, the model function values, right? The parent graph function, the values by 3, right? So a times f of x. We multiply that by 3, everything by 3. And we end up with these values, right? We need to plug these values in, but be careful, guys. My h case 1, 2. So you got to find, right, draw the intersection of the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. That'll be from here. h is 1, that's 1, 2, right there. That's my new intersection. Once you find that right here, uh, we need to plug in values. 1, 3, we got 2 and 1.5, 4 and 0 0.75. If you want half as much, you go up 6 right there. If you go quarter as much, um, you should go up 12, but it's out of the range. And for the negative side, it's all negative. So all the x's are negative, the y's are negative. And if you follow the values, that's what it looks like, okay? And then we connect the dots, and there you go. So we did most of the work, but the question is also asking us to state the domain and the range of the g of x. I'll just leave it up to you. I think it's uh, fairly easily observable. So why don't you write them in terms of uh, inequality, set notation, and also the uh, interval notation for both domain and for range, and we'll talk about that in class, okay? All right, moving on to example two. So we're supposed to 
we will learn how to graph this type right here, the transformation of one over x. But what is this thing? Hmm. But I do remember us learning long division, right? Let's just try that and see what happens, right? So we only care about the leading terms, x and 3x. x times what gives you 3x? It's a 3, right? So that should be 3 right there. So at this point, we multiply 3 to the entire divider, which gives you 3x minus 3. When you subtract that, that should become negative 1. So that right there is quotient, and that right there is the remainder. Yeah. And then when, so when you write, put them together, so g of x is now 3 plus negative 1, that's the remainder, divided by the divisor. But it doesn't look like this, does it? Well, it almost does, actually. If you sw swap the order, uh, that looks like k, and that shouldn't be negative up here, so let's bring it down to the front. When you do that, that's what we get. And that's h, that's k. And then a is negative 1, that's less than 0, so it's vertically flipped, right? Now, when you have this table, we're supposed to multiply this f of x by negative 1. When you do that, those are the values, right? So using hk, which is 1, 3, 1, 3, right here, guys. Yep, it did. And after you draw those two blue lines, the intersection of the uh, both vertical and horizontal asymptote, and we use those table of values to draw the dot points. Uh, me, personally, uh, I don't like to do five. I just like to do three is good enough for me. Um, but five is safe, right? All right, let's connect the points. And that's what that looks like, OK? All right. Why don't you go ahead and write the domain and the range. And I'm going to just move on to example number three, OK? I'll, I'll check those tomorrow. All right, now we came to the third type, which is given the graph, can you write it as the function? Uh, the one that we've been practicing is uh, g of x is equal to a times parenthesis 1 over x minus h plus, 3, uh, plus k. So uh, let's look for h and k first. Right here, I noticed that that looks like y is negative 6. And here, the vertically x is equal to 4. And y is the k, and x values is the h. So hk is 4, negative 6. And it contains 5, negative 4, right? Uh, you could also use 3, negative 8. And I would use the points that's given to us because the rest is, I'm not quite sure. This one. Looks like it's halfway between here and here, so that looks to be about negative six and a half. But you sh just shouldn't guess. It's just not safe. And here it looks like it's crossing it. I think that's I think that's pretty safe. But just go with what's given. All right. Yeah. Th does does this look familiar? We've done this with uh, quadratic equations, right? All right. Let's put H K into the form right here, guys, and we get that. But it contains 5, negative 4. So if you plug that in, it should work. So that should satisfy the equation, right? So 5 is the negative, uh, so x, and negative 4 is the g of x. When you plug that in, that's what you get. After simplifying a little bit, we find that a is 2. Therefore, g of x is 2 times quantity 1 divided by x minus 4 minus 6. There is a really quick way of doing this, but it's not always accurate. And that is, go to the new intersection of the vertical and horizontal asymptote. You go right by 1. Okay. Once you do that, how many times do you have to go up or down? If you go up 1, 2, that's the value of A. A is 2. If you have to go down, that's negative, right? But sometimes you can't see that value. It's hard to tell. So... Instead of doing that, I mean, you could do that as like just to check, am I in the right ballpark, right? But I would highly recommend using this method, okay? All right, guys, that wraps up today's lesson. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Good night.